I'm not sure about loveness, but I know I believe in angels. I believe in happiness. Good Saturday morning to you. Happy Saturday and possibly out there to some of my New Zealand friends. Happy Sunday to you. It is so wonderful to be able to have a show that I, I've got so many friends now and I love it because so many people are um, willing and patient and allowing to be able to come onto the show and we get to form that brand new friendship. And I think that's really what the magic is all about in life is meeting kind people, caring people, and contributionists, right? Fellow contributionists out here in this world. And I have a beautiful lady from Denmark, Denmark. get those lips moving this morning, Elizabeth, Denmark this morning, and her name is Trine Hansen. And she will be with us in just a moment. But first up, I want to shout out to our sponsor, Viter Energy Mints. I love Viter Energy Mints. Let me tell you, because it's packed full of my B vitamins. And, you know, I'm just always buzzing around like a little bee. And I believe in the power of our B vitamins. So I've always done the full complex vitamins and I get a little extra with my vitamins. So I'm going to bring up their information right now to the broadcast so that you can write it down because their website is govitor.com. That's G O V I T E R dot com and if you want a little mint that is easy to pop the tin into your pocket into your purse into your gym bag wherever you're going in your car and get a little boost a little energy boost naturally plus with some caffeine try these Viter energy mints so it's great tasting and convenient in one product 40 milligrams of caffeine per mint that blows me away because that is half a cup half a standard cup of coffee in one mint. So please don't chug the whole thing. <laughs> That's not what it's intended for. And it's really interesting. If you're a young person out there watching the show, you know, I have all these different caffeinated uh, products and I'm going to do a little bit of a PSA. So my daughter's friend, uh, her boyfriend, so the friend's boyfriend works out and he actually took too much of his pre-workout yesterday and wound up in the ER. So you want to be careful with your caffeinated products, not saying, you know, anything bad against any caffeinated product, because as we know, that's all I have here for sponsors. I love them, but you have to use them responsibly because there is a thing of taking too much of anything, right? Everything in moderation. That's that's my deal. But B6 complex in each mint, niacin B3, B6, um, as I mentioned, folic acid, which is B9, vitamin B12, B, 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 tons of B energy. You're going to feel fantastic. 20 minute, 20 mints per tin, sugar-free, zero calorie, and strong minty flavor. And they really do. So they say, of course, on their website, they're vegan, star K kosher, gluten, dairy, soy, wheat-free, um, and they come in the flavors of wintergreen, spearmint, peppermint, cinnamon, and chocolate mint. And even the chocolate mint is really refreshing because it's a, it's like a cool minty breeze on top of a, oh, just a, a delicious decadent little chocolate mint. I, it's so nice. Um, and so you can buy this at goviter.com or Amazon and also at Walmart. So go get your Go Viter, Viter Energy Mints today. All right, everybody, I would love to be able to bring the lady of the hour, the focus of our show, Miss Trine Hansen, to the show. And But first, I want to tell you a little bit about her background. So we've all written down our Viter Energy Mint information. I'm going to take that off the screen. Let's talk about Trine Hansen. So Trine is an author of Spiritual Rebel Enjoying the Heck Out of Life, and she's a podcast host of Talking to Trine about sensitive 
superpowers. I spent a few minutes over the past couple of days and uh, more than a few minutes, actually, I was telling her in the green room that her podcast is so engaging that, you know, the world of podcasts is very saturated at the moment. There are so many of them that a lot of podcasts are good, but they're not fully engaging. So you're going to click on to them and listen for a little while and then go, this isn't feeding me. So other things take your focus. And before you know it, you've shut it off and it's been three weeks and you're like, oh, yeah, I got to get back to that because it was it was good. Not hers. I turned her podcast on and, you know, my focus is gaining <laughs> in respect <laughs> to, to gaining more focus as I get older. Um, but I've always had a, a supercharged, you know, I, I can focus into many different things and I know exactly where I am. It's, it's like a totally micromanaged ADHD. Yes, that's me. Um, so <laughs> I was really fully engaged in her podcast and she has such wonderful guests on there. And to talk about something like sensitivity and superpowers, I can't wait to get into this conversation. So Trini believes that we all have our unique superpowers and we are here to share them with the world. She is quoted on her website stating, I believe that life is meant to be enjoyable, including all the messiness of personal and spiritual growth. Change is natural too and doesn't have to be hard and scary. I believe that it is our birthright to be who we are and we get to bring all of us where our inner truth is leading us on trinaysplayground.com. That's www. T R I N E S P L A Y G R O U N D dot com. You can take a survey to gauge your vibrational temperature. And Trine's wisdom is shared by stating most of us have learned from an early age that we shouldn't just expect life to be easy, that the only way to get what we want is to put the struggle, to put in the struggle and effort that we somehow have to prove ourselves worthy before we can receive the good things we're longing for. Luckily, we are also born with an inner voice reminding us that there is more to life and that life is meant to be enjoyable. Many of us have had to relearn how to listen. Yes, we've met those people and to trust this inner calling. But nothing feels better than to start building a stronger and deeper connection to our inner power, our soul, our higher self. Amen. This is when life starts to feel more like a playground than an obstacle course. We believe that everything in life for us rather than against us, even if we don't quite see how, this is when we no longer feel alone because we have the power of the universe at our back, she's quoted. Ultimately, she offers a spa day for your soul. And let's find out some more with Trine Hansen. She is live in Denmark this morning. Good morning, Trine. How are you? Hi. Good morning. And thank you for having me. I'm, I'm all blushing from those beautiful words. So... Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this. I have been too. And, and you know, I find you to be so unique because you don't walk through life finding too many people offering, like I just read, a spa day for your soul. How decadent does that sound and feel? Yeah, I know. So have you always been very spiritually engaged and allowing yourself to be sensitive like take me back to mm. when your journey began well then we're gonna end up in a completely different energy back then <laughs> and i'm happy to share because luckily i'm i've moved on i i've always had the interest i have always been curious about why does life seem easier for some people than for others especially because it was the other people it seemed easy to, and then it seemed pretty hard for me. Um, so if, if anybody had ever given out prizes for victim mentality, I would have had a whole closet full and, and not just the little symbolic ones, they would have been big ass trophies because <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> I, I, felt, 
I felt so sorry for myself. Life felt so unfair because ah, I always struggled to fit in and to spend a lot of energy pretending to be normal. Um, so I never, I never belonged and I felt alone. I felt weird. I felt different. And, and that kind of, that was a big part of what ended me in, in stress and depression for more than a decade. So, so no, I wasn't born, you know, bouncing off the wall, happy all the time. Absolutely not. So, and if I can do it, anybody can, that's not just the cliche. That's really, really true because. If you ask people who knew me, then, I mean, if complaining was a recognized sport, you would be talking to an Olympic medalist here. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah. You know what I find fascinating when you take a moment and you're listening and you're looking and you're absorbing another human being. And so many times, you know, it, lately I've been able to spend some time with a few people where they said, you know, my life has turned completely around. And I've learned all these evolutionary skills and I suffered with depression. A lot of times you can still see that energy. And when I look at you, it seems like you've completely cleansed yourself because it's shocking to hear that that is where you're coming from. I don't see any of that energy left within you when you were struggling with depression. Um, you know, it seems like we're in a society where we just want to throw a pill at it. Yep. <laughs> is that the same? I mean, that is definitely here in the United States is, you know, let's get a prescription. Oh, take this pill, honey. You're going to feel much better. Is that the same in Denmark? And, and did you have to go down that path to realize it wasn't for you? Fortunately not. Um, we, I think we are a little less quick to prescribe medication here. Um, and, and for me, it, it started out as stress and then it manifested as, as depressions. But when I managed my stress, the depressions were sort of survivable as well. Um, but there were definitely times where I would have taken any pill anybody had offered me if it would make it go away, because it is no joke when you're in that deep, dark emotional hole. So I definitely understand that people can need that help to get through it. You know, I, I've i always resonated with um, the visual of everyone on a path. Mm -hmm. And no matter how close our relationships are, may it be a spouse or a child or a parent, every single human is on their own version of their own path. Mm -hmm. And to look at your path of the heartache and and depression and stress and i'm sure we could probably add anxiety and we can add self-doubt and we can add all <laughs> this on top oh, of yeah. it. long long list yep <laughs> <laughs> looking back now how did that help to shape you where you are today oh that's a, a beautiful question and it has as you say shaped me so much and if I was asked, I would, if, if I had to go back and do it over to get to where I am today, I would do that 10 times in a heartbeat because it, it has taught me so much. I mean, I, I was, it wasn't pretty, but it forced me to, you know, really, really dig through all the things and look at all the angles and really experience what life is like when it's unpleasant. And I think that's, that's what makes me, you know, so excited about life today because, because of that huge difference. And sometimes I, I wake up and I have to pinch myself because is it really possible to feel good for no reason whatsoever, other than opening your eyes and getting ready for another day? Not, not every single day. I just want to say that there are still sort of meh days, but. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're human, right? Yeah. Everything is cause and effect. I mean, as much as we, we can take possession of our own minds, in my opinion, and, and 
you know, just be soul felt and be sensitive and be free in that you're still, there's still cause and effect there. You know, there's still cars that break down. There's jobs that are lost. There's people that pass away, things like that, that, you know, you, you have to take in the negative. We're, we're not bots, you know, we, and it seems like, um, there again, in the world of medicine, you know, that throwing a pill at it just seems like, well, okay, maybe if I was a cyborg, you know, you're basically <laughs> trying to reprogram me and like, oh, here's this one fix and you're going to be fantastic. Mm-hmm. What I would Running low on energy, just plug in and yeah, then <laughs> plug in, right? <laughs> but it, it doesn't work. And it's fascinating to get a little bit older just on that energy topic. Um, you know, it's like consuming caffeine. Let, let's just take that one um, co- chemical compound, right? Mm-hmm. So you consume caffeine. And the first day you do it, oh, you're going to have so much energy. And then the next day, okay, I feel good. And you can maintain at that good. But if you're not pouring into yourself and you're not getting sleep, mm-hmm. you're not getting rest from your stress, and you're not filling your own cup, eventually, you're going to load up all the caffeine you can. And it's not going to do a darn thing for you. Not a single thing for you. I I would love because I can feel that your, your mind is a beautiful place, an artistic place. Can you paint the picture for you? What was the portrait in the midst of your depression and self-doubt? And now what is the portrait of your freedom for anybody who's struggling with depression that's watching the show mm-hmm. that maybe don't believe that it's possible? Oh, that's actually a challenging question because I'm not particularly a visual person, but the feeling I had when it was worst was some days I wanted to claw my skin off because I, I couldn't contain all that pain in my body. And there were nights when I went to bed wishing I didn't have to wake up in the morning. So it was a, a pretty grim place to be in. And then, and then that has given me a sense now of I've already been through the worst that's ever going to happen to me probably. So now life is, is a lot less scary and... And I wish I could tell you that that I had one of these, you know, magic enlightening moment where the clouds parted and the trumpet sounded and everything turned around and ee, life was just good. But it wasn't it wasn't quite like that. I must admit, um, if there was if there was one thing that turned it around for me, it was actually the day that I gave up, just gave up struggle because that was what I had been spending my most of my days doing, trying to live up to, to that external something that was expected of me. Wow. You know, and that's that's superimposed by by our environment, don't you think? Oh, oh, absolutely. We're we're trained to to live like that from an early age, aren't we? So, oh my goodness, so many questions. Now, how about let's let's touch back on something that you just mentioned about life isn't that scary. Mm-hmm. And you had mentioned here in your bio to that effect that it, it's not something to be afraid of. Why? Oh, that, that's a big one and, and one of my favorites because when you trust life, I mean, some days I feel fearless and invincible because I know life is on my side and life is on all our sides, on everyone's side. And the way I sort of, well, I guess that's a visual that I believe that there's only one source of energy in the universe, that every energy is the same no matter what form it presents itself in. So it's kind of like light and darkness if you consider there's darkness does not exist, that is just absence of light. So so mm. in in our room we can we can turn on the lights and we can open the blinds and and we can add more light. But if we want more darkness, I can't just go flip the darkness switch and then and then 
darkness. I can turn off the light. I can shut out the sun, and and that's actually the only darkness that exists. That is so powerful. I'm bringing that into the broadcast. Darkness does not exist. It's just absence of light. That brings somebody so much power. That's like whole, handing over the toolbox of saying here. And, and by the way, in the toolbox is your guide, <laughs> your little life guide that, you know, we kind of wish all of our babies were born with because we got no clue. <laughs> And our parents didn't either, so they taught us their broken tools. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the broken tools, because that's kind of where my brain wanted to go um, before I asked you the last question, was if you were um, guiding a young parent, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, how can they harness their own stuff to make sure that you're not harboring it into your child do you work with clients on that i worked on myself with that a lot um because we have some pretty powerful family patterns going on um so i have definitely had to make some some decisions and be very aware that i did not pass that on to my kids my mom suffers from anxiety more than I have ever done. Um, and, and that has taken up so much space because, you know, in her day, anxiety wasn't something we were talking about. She was just the worrying type, you know. So, so she was never supported. She never got the help that she needed. And, and that played such a massive role in my life, actually, um, I remember um, a day that that I still think of as as a key moment because I have a brother that's eight years older than me and he was always a super free spirit. He did what he wanted when he wanted and everything worked out for him and life was good. Um, and, and that triggered my mom's anxiety so much because to him curfew was just sort of a guideline that he rarely followed and, you know, so I remember one evening, I think it was at least 15 minutes past his curfew or maybe even more. And my mom was already pacing around the house. And then she heard an ambulance, you know, and she was just, she was so sure that it had to be him. It, it had to be for him. It couldn't, it couldn't be anything else. So, so she was frantically, you know, moving around the house and worried. And this was before her cell phones, of course. So she had no way of, of getting in touch with him. And I remember looking at my mom, we were, were always really close. My dad was away a lot. So I, I felt kind of responsible for her. So I promised myself that I would never, ever be the reason that my mom had to worry like that ever again. So imagine my teenage years hanging, <laughs> hanging on the clock and making sure I was home and, and always being good and never. <sighs> so, so yeah, that has, that has been a big big part that I have had to make sure I didn't pass on to my kids. Sure. Sure. And living, you know, sort of a moment, a step ahead of the present. It, it just, you know, I've learned somebody had mentioned a couple of months ago saying, okay, well, the definition of anxiety is constantly living into the future. Yeah. And um, wow. Wow. The worst so, possible future even. <laughs> sometimes the worst possible future. Yeah. You know, one of the things, and, and I would say our backgrounds, um, now we just met, but just on the surface of what you've shared, um, you, my mother has also suffered with anxiety. Mm -hmm. and But in our instance, I don't think she's ever seen it. I, I don't think that she ever identified it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm sure that there's so many people out there and saying, well, goodness, okay, well, they absolutely did the very, very best that they could in kindness and in love. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that piece is there. And for me, I realized running the internal story, because we always, always have that voice, always. Yep. And it's so interesting when we're sitting there and having a conversation with someone or, or especially trying to work with the people that we live in the same environment and they do something or they don't respond within a normal time 
or they say a certain thing and boom, our mind wants to run off ahead of us. It's like, whoa, no, 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 this is not a horse race. There is no carrot, bring it back and shutting off those internal stories. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, that really helped abolish those negative emotions. It, it stopped so many arguments that could have happened. Yeah. Um, did you do any work with that? Where's your philosophy with those internal stories and, and that internal voice? Mm, mm, that's that's another good one and another big one. I think they have sort of morphed over the years more than, uh, oh, of course I have been working on it. I just don't remember a particular tool I could I could mm -hmm. share. That'll, that'll pop up when I'm lying in my bed at night and I'll be like, oh, I should have said that. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. That, I mean, you're a friend of the show, so you can always, always go back into the chat and add anything or anything like that. But um, I'm glad to see that 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 also resonates with you. Mm -hmm. because that helps me feel like I'm on the right track. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, there is actually one thing um, when it comes to our minds. I hadn't actually considered it as much in, in relationship to anxiety as such. But um, I call it the stairs of thought because uh, one thing that really got to me when I first time I read a book that stated happiness is a choice. I was like, I could have thrown that book clear through the window because how annoying is that? I mean, if it was that easy, we would all have just chosen to be happy. But what they forgot to mention is that it's a choice you have to keep making. So every time a thought pops into your mind, you, ha you have that choice. Um, and and that's, that's where the stairs come in. You have a thought and you find yourself somewhere in the middle of that staircase. And you can decide to follow the thought upwards towards the rooftop terrace with the lo lovely views. Or you can take that thought and allow it to bring you down the stairs to some deep, dark basement where you don't want to be. Mm. Does that, that make sense? Yes, and I'm just taking that in because that is beautiful. And I feel it. I really do feel it. And it helps to explain, you know, so many people, um, they just sort of guru the heck out of it, you know, and it's like these little sound bites and the sound bites are always going to be like, well, stress and anxiety is a choice. And happiness <laughs> But they don't give you any tools. They don't explain it. And that explains it. That, you know, just like I was mentioning with the running the stories. Well, if you identify that there's a story that your mm -hmm. brain is taking off without yeah. you and running, and you're solidly on those stairs going, now we're going to go in a positive direction. Yeah. Because I could choose going down the stairs mm -hmm. and going in a negative direction. Yeah. But ultimately... I'm going to have to do the same thing. I'm going to have to ask further questions. I'm just choosing yes. to focus on the positive until you realize, okay, maybe this is a slight battle that we have to fight. And, you know, I was um, watching, again, a video not too long ago, and they had mentioned how anger, if you anger yourself and then take a blood sample, you'll see that you're poisoning yourself. Yeah. That makes me want to protect my emotions and, and not guard them. I don't think that's the right word, mm -hmm. but protect my, my spiritual emotional being even yeah. more. Yeah. You know, people talk about having a thick skin. Mm -hmm. What, what, how, what do you think about the thick skin? Because we were talking about, you know, going through, uh, may it be trauma, may it be um, trying to recover from things of stress and anxiety and self-doubt and depression. Okay, that adds a layer to you, but it's not a thick skin, is it? No, I, no, I don't think so. I mean, it, um, my brain is kind of stuck on 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 the the body chemistry that's actually produced by our emotions, and where you say anger that shows up as a kind of poison. I think that anger is one thing, but I think the real poison is when we are denying it or trying to you know make ourselves wrong for being angry. Because if someone crosses our lines, steps on our boundaries. 
a little anger is actually a natural and healthy reaction. So again, it's it's sort of turning something natural and in itself neutral, and then we turn it into something bad. And I think that's the real poison of it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, a, a thick skin, that's sort of the same thing, like, um, or the stiff upper lip that, okay, <laughs> I, I might be angry, but, but no, I'm, I'm, mm -mm, I'm not gonna, you know, react to it. But sure. if, if you still feel hurt by it, it's still in there and just pretending that it isn't won't do you any good. Mm -hmm. And I, so I have a viewer, um, she is mentioning about how she recognized her anxiety at age 16. Mm -hmm. uh, she is now into her forties mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of people will say, well, be mindful. Well, what does that mean? Be in the present. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Um, can you give her a few words about how maybe she could start to work on um, managing, uh, controlling? What, what's the right word for being able to get your anxiety where you want it to be? Yeah, I don't. I, mm, I, I think I would have to go a different way around that one because, mm, again, back to back to the whole thing that when we trust that life is on our side. There's nothing to be anxious about, really. And that's so easy to say. As you said, that's that's kind of a, a cheap one, isn't it? But what I can say is that for me, one of the, the biggest things that created that shift for me was starting to notice how all the things that I thought were wrong in my life and with me actually turned out to be blessings or gifts because when I realized that sort of in retrospect, that, that the stress and depression helped me become who I am today. And I have been turning many, many, <clears throat> pardon me, many things around that I didn't like about myself. One of them was the whole not fitting into the real world and not doing well in a, in a regular job, even though I'm, I, I have the capability, so I ought to. Um, and I realized that 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 part of me that made it hard for me to to function out in the real world was actually also that side of me that that makes me good with people that helps me you know sense what's going on and and when i noticed that and i asked myself would i really give that up to to be normal and live a normal life i was like no i wouldn't because this this is a gift and that's the sensitivity but that's just where it started. Then I, you know, I was like, wow, I have always thought this was a weakness in me, but I can actually turn that into a strength. Are there anything else that I have been looking at myself and condemning myself for? And I turned a lot of things around. And the day I realized, okay, I think I'm getting good at this was when I was able to, to, to think back because I'm taller than pretty much everyone and I have bigger feet than most and I've always hated that but but one day I was like huh well that has helped me not spend all my money on shoes and I was like then I laugh because okay everything can be turned around right. but but back to the and and that is where um I don't know if it helps exactly on anxiety but it helped me trust life because those were the things I had been feeling that were unfair of life. Why did you make me tall and awkward and, and ill when I just want to fit in and, and be pretty? And, and why do I have to have this weird sense of, of emotions and, and things that people just find annoying? So I was angry at life with that, resentful even. But when I started to see the gifts in that, that helped me trust life, which then again, help me trust that whatever shows up in the future can't be all that bad either. You know, I love what you're saying there about how there are gifts in all of it. You know, so Camilla, she's watching and she's talking about uh, being a people pleaser. And I can remember I had a report card from my half day kindergarten because they only did it in half days back then. And um, it said, Elizabeth is a do-gooder. 
you must fix that. And my mother got this and she, you know, she had some choice words to say about the kindergarten teacher. <laughs> and, um, and it came into light years and years and years later. Mm -hmm. of saying, ah, life is not about running around with an empty basket because I'm not putting time into myself. I'm not filling my own cup per se, my own basket per se. Mm -hmm. And then walking around with that basket, I have nothing to give. No. So that's why I feel terrible. I feel junky because I, I got nothing to give. Yeah. So I it was really a stop sign for me of saying, it's not about pleasing other people. Mm -hmm. Did you have the people pleaser? Oh yes, sign me up for the club. <laughs> People Pleasers Anonymous. Yeah, I would have been there. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And I think, um, and, and again, my annoyingly bright outlook on life now makes me actually want to find the beauty of that because wanting to uplift other people, wanting to make other people feel good, that is a beautiful trait. So we shouldn't beat up on ourselves for wanting to make other people happy. We should embrace that part and ask ourselves, so when am I of the most value to other people? Mm. Is, that, is that when I have run myself into the ground doing all the things for all the people? Or, or am I worth more to my spouse and to my kids when I come home from, from a weekend that I spend with my friends or at a retreat or even just going for a walk in nature, it doesn't have to be big fancy things. So yes, absolutely. I love the, I love the visual with the basket. That is so spot on. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, man. Okay. So I wrote that down. When am, and I mistyped that, when am I the most valuable to others to truly give to people that we enjoy giving to. That mm -hmm. is such a powerful point. And, and that's that's the culmination of it, is that we are born as people that are selfless. We gain joy by giving, mm -hmm. but we must open up ourselves and allow others to give to us, mm -hmm. allow ourselves time to give to ourselves, Otherwise, you know, you, you're just walking around like as a hard rock with a really hard shell and people try to tap all the time. And can I help you yeah. with this? Oh, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't know. Don't look at me. Don't. Mm -hmm. and it's not healthy. All right. So anyway, thank you for that conversation. I, I'm getting so into our conversation. I definitely want to spotlight what you have within your repertoire because you have a really powerful podcast that we were talking about, which is um, talking to Trine. Mm -hmm. and um, about sensitive superpowers. So talking to Trine about sensitive superpowers. Where can we catch the podcast and when does it air? It airs every Friday morning and it is on Spotify and Google Podcast and Apple Podcast and I think even some of the, the other ones, other platforms I'm not as familiar with. Um, but yeah, we have been talking about sensitive superpowers here already, haven't we? Because that is typically one of the, the people pleaser uh, traits is very common for sensitive people. And, and the whole feeling of, of being weird and different and feeling alone because everybody else seemed to be getting on with life and understanding the rules of the game. And so, so yeah. Now let's speak a moment about your book and the book has a really interesting title. I have to say, I haven't looked into the book, so this is going to be brand new. You get to educate me about what I can find in the book. A spiritual rebel enjoying the heck out of life is the title. So a spiritual yes. rebel enjoying the heck out of life is your book. What is it about? Well, my editor didn't like the title, but I had been trying so hard for so long to come up with the perfect one that that exactly, you know, nailed what it was about. And and at the end of it, I was like, I, I, I can't do that. But I felt quite rebellious at the time coming out of the depression and choosing 
to do what felt right for me, that felt that that felt like you know that a big thing that I needed that rebel energy to actually stand up for myself in a way and say, okay, I have been chasing external, you know, guidelines and, and rules, how to live my life forever. I'm over that. No more struggle. Now I'm going to be doing it the way that feels right to me. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was the rebel part and, and enjoying the heck out of life. That's just what I'm doing. So that ended up the title, but what it is, is I have tried to cram everything in there from, from turning my life around pretty much. And we've already talked about many of the things that about trusting life, that when we feel like life is on our side, everything just becomes more fun and more free and lighter in a sense. And one of the things that that gave me a lot of energy at that point as well, was starting to catch a sense of of my big dream because all of a sudden that didn't seem so ridiculous anymore, that maybe I had a message, maybe I could actually make a difference somewhere out there in the big scary world. So that was was a big part of it. And, And I have tons and tons of tools and questions to ask yourself to figure out What is truly your dream? Because we so easily pick up on what other people expect of us or society for that matter. Hmm. Oh, so interesting. Okay. So we do have a viewer with a question. Let's go to the question, then we'll come back to the book. And I have a feeling that they're going to be related. So she is saying within her comment that uh, something I've always wondered why people come up to me and tell me everything about their life. But people I don't know. I'm a good listener and give um, and and give. Okay, listen and give answers. Okay, so I'm going to take that, Camilla, as you're a good listener and you give good answers. Um, But I'm not good at listening to my answer to address people. How? Okay, have you a good answer to that? Um, All right. Let's work with the first part of that, mm-hmm. where people are, are just magnetically connected yeah, to them, yeah, and yeah. they will come up and tell them the whole life story. What is that all about? Because I have that happen all that people will literally yeah, yeah. stop you in the middle of your stride down the street to <laughs> tell you about their brother's wife and her challenges and what should they do. And I'm yes. like, I, I'm not wearing Dr. or Liz. I'm like... <laughs> what brought you to me and I embrace it. Right. But what is that? Oh, well, that's another sensitive thing. I'm almost sure. And, and hi, Camilla, Camilla might actually almost be a neighbor. It sounds pretty Danish or Scandinavian, at least with the, with the last name there. It's a, it's a Danish letter. Um, So we might be, we might be close. Um, And thank you for your questions. They're really good. And, I do believe that it's it's one of the sensitive things that other people are drawn to us because they feel that it will be safe to address us. Mm. They know that they will be met with kindness and compassion. And but it can be a little bit overwhelming, almost scary. I remember moving to Copenhagen. It was my very first day there. I was it was pouring down, it was raining. So I was wearing sort of a, a, a big, not even a raincoat, but sort of like the whole big thing. And I was waiting for, for the for the for the train to take me to a friend. And and there was a guy sitting there, he was drinking a beer and reading a paper and, and he looked at me and started talking to me. And I was like, because I'm, you know, I talk to people and he was like, oh, you're you're not from around here because of my accent. It's sort of <laughs> screamed hillbilly and I was like mm-hmm. so where are you from oh I'm from Horsens and he was like oh yeah I did time there I know that place and I was like mm-hmm. okay and then I got his, his story about how, how he turned his life around because he met he met his wife and then oh Camilla's from Norway so neighbors then yes <laughs> yeah um and and I think people are drawn to us simply because they know we're good listeners Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I, I find your life path to be so amazing. It's, it's like, it's glittery, you know, isn't it wonderful? You get to a point in your existence and your evolution to where it's like, oh my gosh, I, I can create this beautiful path. It doesn't have to be dark. It doesn't have to be scary. Like walking through the forest at night alone mm -hmm. It can be sunrise and you can see the, the metal in the earth, shine and the flowers and and it you're just you're painting such a beautiful picture of life and i would love to talk a little bit more about your book so once we get into the book do you offer tools is it more story bound no it's a workbook it it, it is it is a workbook there are about a million questions and and sort of tools and techniques um for uh, I have one that I call the filter flush to to change our patterns um, because, yeah, I think of our brain as one big filter because, um, you know, in any given moment, we take in so many sensory inputs. We might not be aware, but there could be a dog or a bird or someone walking by somewhere. There might be the hum of a fridge or, or an AC. And, and even though I'm looking at you and at the camera, I peripheral views and everything. So we are bombarded with sensations, how I'm sitting, where my feet touch the ground, if I'm a little bit hungry and all those things. So our brains are designed to to filter through that and make sure that it's the important things that come through. And, and sometimes we have to adjust that filter to let the good things through. Mm. So mm. as you say, with the stories we tell ourselves, um, so, so yes, that's one of the tools. And, and I do, you know, there's like when we get triggered by other people, I do my best to explain how I deal with that. And when that, unexpected bill that you can't actually afford pops right. up then what do we do and so it's it's a very very practical down to earth kind of book and and one thing people have said to me that they enjoyed about it is that it is it is a very friendly book there are no you have to and you must and it is very important that because as you say we are all on our own path and I absolutely believe that that life will take us to where we need to go, whether you read my book or not, whether you do this thing or that thing or the other. Um, there was a, there was a post on Facebook the other day, sort of saying, "Explain really poorly what it is you do," and I was like, "Oh, I teach people that they don't need me." That's <laughs> <laughs> I love you know, those posts are so creative because they take us out of the box that we're thinking in at the moment mm -hmm. and they, they push you outside of that box and go, yeah. okay, simplify it, huh? Because we always want to make things so complicated. And um, I, I've noticed that, and this could be a totally different show, but male speak and female speak are two different languages. And uh, I was, um, I think it was a family member, maybe a young nephew or something like that. And I was letting them know, I said, you know, you're, you're going off to college, you may get into relationships, T try conversational therapy, because you speak Chinese. And a young lady that you may start courting, well, she speaks German. <laughs> and neither one of you know the other language. So that's key number one. And it's uh, it's fascinating to see those little posts that just kind of pop you out of your box and say, the simplest form, what do you do? And you were mentioning, I teach people that they don't need me, which is, it, that's an amazing response. It's an amazing retort to that. Um, good morning, Ken. It's wonderful to see you. Um, all right. Now, I noticed on the book mm -hmm. that it's available for only $2 on Kindle. Two and a half, I think, actually, <laughs> but but close enough. So, yeah. why is the price point so low? I think it should be much, much higher. Well, um, I don't ever had any notion that that writing the book was gonna make me a billionaire. Right. Um, honestly, I mostly wrote it for myself because it was it was my 
I sometimes joke and say that I'm not only an introvert, I'm also a textrovert because when I write things, that's that's how I process. Um, so it it helped me clarify what was actually the the steps I had taken to to turn my life around from stress and depression to enjoying the heck out of life. So yeah. so mostly it was for myself, and and then I figured there's about two and a half thousand books published every day. So why make it harder for people to get a hand on my, a copy of mine than it had to be? That is very kind, very generous of you. You have a, another event coming, mm -hmm. which I saw in the image that you had sent into the show. And we have, we have the poster that we're going to show. Is this a free event? Yes, it is. Okay, so tell me about, it's a five-day festival. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about it. It's upcoming, so April 18th to April yeah. 22nd, 2022, yeah. and it's online. So this is yep. worldwide. So let's yes. announce it worldwide. What is it all about? Oh, as you can see, it's called Happy and Aligned, because to me, that's just the perfect state to be in when we want to create these enjoyable lives. Because to me, happiness, that's not just bouncing off the wall, kind of, you know, <laughs> giddy happiness. To me, it covers the whole spectrum of positive human emotions. And we we tap into those when we tap into the best parts of, of, of ourselves and our lives, as we've already talked about a lot. And then the alignment part, that's the more spiritual, where happiness, that's about our physical lives, being human. And then being aligned, that's about being congruent with our souls and our dreams and that that trust in the universe. So when we have both the physical happiness side and we have the aligned part, that's for me when things come together. And well, at first I thought, oh, I want to do one of those five day challenges, but I just got so stuck on that word. I mean, it's the opposite of a challenge. This mm -hmm. is like, a magic bubble where you get to take a step away from real life because as we also talked about that we when we are in a good place real life is just so much easier to handle so i invite people to come into this space and soak up some good vibes i have lined up some amazing guest speakers already so i've been doing that all week i'm so excited um and there's going to be so much good stuff. And there's not going to be any of the whole, oh, get an accountability partner. And, and you have to be here every day because otherwise, basically, sometimes it's like you're a loser if you don't show up for everything. And, and you never amount to anything unless you fully dedicate yourself to this. But, but the whole point is, first of all, we're, we're all grown-ups. And we can all hopefully sense what it is that we need. So if it feels like something we want to do for ourselves. I think this is going to be a really fun place to do it. And there's a networking option as well, because I know some people miss that in um, online events. So, so that's a VIP option. Then we create space because they, they are invited in on Zoom with me when I'm doing my training. And then when our guest speakers are online, we, we hang back and we talk and we get into things or do breakout rooms so people can get to know each other a little bit. Oh my goodness. So you have a lot going on. So let's talk about, uh, we know what days. So April 18th, mm -hmm. April 22nd, 2022, it's online. So this is worldwide festival. Mm -hmm. uh, what time does it start? What are, how long does it go in the day and how mm -hmm. do we register? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I have, uh, there's a link um on my website i think it says event up top but it's trinisplayground.com slash event so it should be findable and um there are well oh the whole the time zone tango as we talked about before we started about making sure um but replays will be available of course and and they'll stay up for a week or so after the event so everybody can catch up um, because it is impossible to find times that fit everybody. So what I do is I spread it out a bit throughout the day so that there's a, 
an opportunity for our Australian friends and for for us here in oh yes <laughs> thank you I love it I'm sorry I don't mean to interrupt you but I love this graphic you have here happy and aligned yeah. that not even your bills your ex your job your boss your weight your mother-in-law can bring you down <laughs> I love that. Okay, all right, go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's perfectly fine because that is that is what I celebrate every single day of my life. That nothing can throw me off completely anymore. Sure, I react and things can hurt, but nothing takes me back into my hole anymore because I have the tools now. I have the trust. I have the foundation and. And to me, that's just everything. And that's what I wanted to share with people. So Absolutely. everybody's invited. I, I really love to see you there. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, so we can go on to trinesplayground.com and click on the event tab up in the top toolbar, and it'll take you to where we can register. So I do have the website live. I'd love to take a look at your website for just a moment. Um, yep, yeah, here's the button. It says, sounds great, <laughs> tell me more. And that is for the Happy and Aligned Festival that is coming up this April, 2022. Um, Take me through your website a little bit. I see this a great location to be able to catch the podcast, talking to Trine about sensitive superpowers, mm -hmm. as well as information on how where to find. You made it so easy. Man, you have <laughs> masterminded this website, made it so easy. We have a button right here we can click. Mm -hmm. Find the book on Amazon, and it is a Kindle download for about two and a half dollars. So extremely, pleasurably affordable. Um, what else, where else would you like to take us on the website? I'd like to explore the website for a moment. Well, to me, everything's about this festival right now. But there are options to get in touch. I think there's an invitation to come find me on Facebook because I love connecting with people. That's actually the best part about having the podcast and arranging the festival. And I mean, like being here with you today, I just meeting gorgeous people from all around the world that would never have happened if I hadn't started this journey. So get in touch if you reach out, find me on Facebook. I mean, I'm happy to talk as you can probably uh, tell. I love that. You know, you are so kind and you're so caring and and willing to give of your time. I am absolutely uh, totally in love with this broadcast because you have given so much to us. On the website, I, you know, of course you can find out about the festival, so please mm -hmm. do just go to Trine's Playground. It's www.trines p-l-a-y-g-r-o-u-n-d.com and you can look up the event you can also take a quiz <laughs> tell me what the quiz is about because i'm so curious yeah well everybody likes quizzes don't they um <laughs> so <laughs> so i had to have a quiz of my own and basically it's 12 affirmations that you sort of get to rate um about how you feel because Again, to me, key part of, of enjoying my life is trusting it. And so I have these affirmations that you sit with for a second. Um, like, I trust that life is always working out for me. And you're like, ah, no, that's not what I'm experiencing. Then you might give that a one or a two. Or like, yes, yes, that's exactly. Then you give it a five. And... And even just that awareness of, hmm, how, how are life and I actually getting along right now? That can, that can tell us a lot about where we are and, and if we need a little, a little boost somewhere. Oh, wow. That is, that's really, really interesting. Really cool. You know, I just want to use the word cool. That's really cool because <laughs> it's hard for us to try to figure out well, how do I analyze everything I have flying through within me? May it be emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and just getting it all to freeze 
Like we wish we could play that musical freeze dance that we used to as kids and just scream freeze and all these emotions just pause. And then we get to say, okay, you go sit down over there. Let's bring you up a little bit more because we need more of you. <laughs> and this is nice. It gives you like a barometer. Yeah. Hey, you weren't even invited, dude. <laughs> Where did you come from? Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I love that. And thank you for giving that tool. And I think it's an amazing thing that you've um, gotten to the point to realize that the tool is needed, mm -hmm. right? To be able to give that first stepping stone is yeah. so powerful of someone's healing and someone's identification of, of, of everything that's going on within you. And it, mm -hmm. it's all valid. And you're, yeah. you're not weird. You're not awkward. But if you feel weird and you feel awkward, embrace it. That's you. Absolutely. That's yes. Let's be who we are because that helps other people. That creates space for other people to be themselves as well. So I think that's actually one of the most beautiful gifts we can give to others. Be weird. Take the pressure right. off everyone else. That's right. I agree with you. I totally, I, I've loved this conversation, Trina. I want to say Me thank too. you so much for your time and congratulations on all your success thus far. And you're, you're a near and dear friend of myself and the show. And whenever you would like to come back on and talk about anything else, another event, another book, anything else that you have going on in your world, please do. We, we really would love to hear what you have to share. Mm, perfect. Now I have to go create something new so I get to come back <laughs> because this has just been so such a treat. It has been so delicious. And I'm really glad our paths crossed. I mean, the internet is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> it, it the internet is amazing. It really is. To be able to have a rich, enjoyable conversation of someone who is in Denmark and someone who is in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States, and we get to come together this way. I'm so thankful for technology. I remember being a little kid. Do you remember? And they'd say, oh, we're going to have Visiphones and we're going to have this. And everybody's like, no, we're not going to have that. And here we are. We do. And even, even to the nth degree of the flying cars. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, here we are. <laughs> so this is really cool. It, it's nice to connect with someone like yourself. It's nice to connect with uh, our elderly family members mm -hmm. that we all know, you know, we've gone through a period of time where there were times that we couldn't see them, but, but we can. And thank you for this slice of life and this moment of time. I've appreciated it. So have I. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right. We'll see you again Bye. soon. Bye. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I've loved, loved that time. Everybody, we are blessed. You are blessed. And I love you. And I will see you uh, very, very 